Before you enjoy this video, why not consider signing up for an account at PAX? Whether you're a player, agent, club, or scout, PAX is for you. Create your free profile and connect with those in the industry today. For more information, please visit us at www.paxsports.com. That's www.paxsports.com. Now, please go ahead and enjoy our video presentation. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen Rugger. So we continue in our series, which is the quest for the all-time South African schools 15. And this time we're going to be looking at the team of the 90s. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as the bell notification. You won't regret it. And do us a favor and just smash that like button down below. Smash it. It's going to feel good. Just do it. Okay, so... Let's get straight into it. The South African schools 15 of the 90s. So we start with the back three. At fullback, we have Justin Swat. Poor Ruiz, class of 1991. Now, what a fantastic athlete this guy was. Played for the Springboks, uh, was a stalwart at the Sharks and Western Province teams as well. Absolutely fantastic athlete. Had a very, very good career and to me, a very underrated player at senior level. Um, but definitely a, a legend of school rugby. Um, his team in 1991 at Porus was amongst the finest in South African history, so definitely deserves his place over there. Our first wing, we have Stefan Brink. He went to Central. Uh, he graduated in 1992. Um, those, those of you that are a bit younger might not be too familiar with him, but this guy had gas. I mean, he was an extremely uh, quick runner. A uh, very talented player. I think if uh, Sevens was as big as it was today back then, this guy would be basically be considered a Sevens legend. He had all the right ingredients for it. But make no mistake, he was absolutely dominant um, in his position at one stage as a wing. Now, he graduated in 1992 at Central, and it was one of the only times in history they actually managed to beat Craig College, and he was at the forefront of that win. So definitely deserves his place in this list. Then we move on to our next player, who is from Daniel Pinar, J.P. Fanamesh, the class of 1993. Now, anyone that uh, has done their research and looks back on school rugby history will know that this guy is amongst the best wings, if not the best wing, um, in the history of school rugby. Um, he basically carried a Daniel Pinar team. Now, I'm not saying Daniel Pinar weren't, uh, talent, uh, didn't have a talented team back then. But this guy was at the forefront of it. He basically won games single-handedly. I mean, he scored tries for fun. Um, he played for the South African schools team, and I think he scored tries for fun against some top, uh, top opposition there as well. And basically, straight after school, he was playing Curry Cup rugby. Um, basically, his career fizzled out a bit. I think it was mainly due to injury. But if he stayed injury-free and uh, he was he managed to basically uh, stave off injury and all the rest of it, there's no doubt this guy would have been a Springbok and very much uh, likely a Springbok great at that. Um, definitely one of the great tragedies of South African rugby that J.P. Funamesh was never able to fulfill his full potential. Okay, so we move on now to the centers. Our first center we have is Andre Fenter, great college class of 1991. Now, him and Donny Gerber are the only guys I can find that actually played SA schools for three years. Um, I think this is a brother of uh, Brendan Fenter, if I'm not mistaken. And um, he actually started off playing first team, uh, he started off his SA schools career and first team level at uh, Monument and then moved to great college thereafter. And yeah, like I said, managed to play for three years. I mean, you know, the only other guy to do that was uh, Donny Gerb, and that's one of the best centers of all time. So it just goes to show how talented, talented he was at that level. Then the other center we have, uh, you don't need any introduction yet. I mean, Jean de Villiers, Springbok great, legend, will go down as one of our finest ever players. Um, also one of our most unlucky players, you have to say. I mean, you think about his injury in 2003 for the World Cup and 2007 for the World Cup. Um... But yeah, I mean, Jean de Villiers was an absolute legend. He was a Paul Jim, class of 99, very strong Paul Jim team, as they are every year. Um, but definitely a special player. And, uh, you know, one of the guys that uh, more than fulfilled their potential um, on our lists. Then we move on to the halfbacks. So the first halfback we have is that scrum of Jochi Fliun. Friends B, class of 1994. Played SA schools two years. Um, and he did manage a respectable... 
um, professional career. But uh, Filion was a bit of a journeyman. He traveled around a lot, but I think he never got the full appreciation he did as a player. Uh, by the you know by the South African public, a general and the selectors and all the rest of it. At school level, he was absolutely devastating. Framsby, Framsby's team in 1994 was one of the top teams in the Eastern Cape, and um, you know Filun was one of the leaders in that team. Absolutely fantastic player at that level, and um, you know I think if you take a look at him um, in terms of uh, how he did in New Zealand, even and all the rest of that, he's, there's a lot of respect for this guy as a player. And apparently a proper team man and, uh, you know, one of the most down-to-earth guys that you'll meet as well. And this is coming from people that I know that know him very well. So, yeah, the scrum off, and it wasn't even close in my opinion, Jochi Filun from Framsby. Then I fly off, maybe a bit of a surprise, but those that know their rugby, no surprise here. Has to be Herschel Gibbs, uh, the class of 92. Now, funny thing happens with Bishop's teams. I mean, every time you think like this team is going to be a golden team, they end up like, uh, you know, slipping on a banana peel. And their banana peel that year, I think, was against Stellenberg. But take nothing away from Herschel Gibbs. I mean, this guy has to go down as one of the best fly-offs in South African school boy rugby history. I mean, you can see some of his videos if you search him on YouTube, guys. I do suggest you go search for the Bishop's team of 1992 and take a look at Gibbs. I mean, he put players on their backsides for fun. And uh, a lot of pace, elusive runner, and uh, anyone that watched him play would have been convinced that he was the, the next Springbok great. But um, he chose cricket and became a South African legend in cricket. So it's, it's not very often that you can see someone that could become like a South African legend either in cricket or rugby. And I think Herschel Gibbs was definitely one of those. Quite interesting that our first fly half was Daryl Cullen and another um, cricket player that chose a, you know, chose a different path, went towards cricket instead of rugby. But yeah, this wasn't even a competition, guys. It was Herschel Gibbs easy. Moving on to our loose forwards. Number eight, Joe van Niekirk, Kez, class of 98. Now, I could not resist putting this picture up. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this picture makes me so happy every time I see it, so I had to put it up. But yeah, I mean, Big Joe, you have to respect how this guy was as a rugby player. I mean, he basically shone straight after he left school. I think he became a Springbok only at the age of 21. Um, very talented player and now runs a, a farm, you know, where you can get, uh, let's call them herbal supplements. I mean, the picture's worth a thousand words in that category, if you can, if you get my meaning. But yeah, definitely Joe van Newkirk, number eight, Kez, class of 98, absolute legend. Uh, flanker, first flanker is Kornay Kricher, uh, class of 1993 of Paul Boys, led them to be ranked number one in South Africa for that year, according to a lot of people. And yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to feel sorry for Kricher because this guy was an absolute beast um, as a player. He was a great servant to Springbok rugby, but unfortunately it was just a dark time for South African rugby and he was the captain at the, at the time. So it was just like, you know, the right player at the sort of wrong era, so to speak. But um, at school level, this guy was taking names and, uh, you know, one of the best players to come out of Paul, uh, Paul Boys. Um, ever, you can basically say from a schoolboy perspective. Um, born in Zambia, did, did his boarding schools, uh, you know, stint at Paul Boys and became an absolute stalwart of the team. Definitely a legend of schoolboy rugby. At the flanker, we have Sean Plykies from Brandwach, the class of 1996. This is the original bone crusher you're looking at here, guys. I mean, this guy tore opposition apart. Now, Brandwach are a very, very respectful, uh, respectable rugby school. Make no mistake. But you don't think of them in the same level as your great colleges, your Paul boys, your Porus, as those type of schools. But Plykies led them to an uh, unbeaten season. He was captain fantastic for them in a large sense. Um, and I think he was, actually I'm pretty damn sure that he was the first ever player of colour uh, that was named SA School's captain. And, um, you know, I think after he left school, opportunities were uh, far and few between and he did suffer from injuries as well but if I remember watching him play for the Falcons and thinking to myself like this guy still got it he still got it but he just never got the opportunities um, I think if Plikes was playing today he would have been probably taken to a far bigger school with better facilities and uh you know, probably brought through the system a lot better than, you know, than it, were, than it was the case in those days. I mean, if you think about it, 96 is basically when rugby just turned professional. Nowadays with the systems and everything, I think you'd have been identified a lot earlier. 
and uh, almost certainly um, would have got his Springbok colours. I mean, anyone that saw him play um, in the Eastern Cape scene in the mid-90s knows that this guy was just destined for higher honours. Now, I believe that uh, he has a son playing first team at Gray High School, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but... Um, yeah, I mean, this guy is just, uh, there are no words to describe how talented he was and what a complete tragedy it is that he wasn't, um, uh, you know, he didn't fulfill his full potential. And like I said, you know, lack of opportunities and injuries robbed him of, uh, you know, all the all that he could have achieved. But uh, we still remember him as one of the all-time great school rugby players. Locks. So first lock we have Horty Low, class of 94, Boiland Lundbo. Not much introductions needed with him, um, part of the SA legend scene right now, a absolutely amazing lock at school level, um, played very hard rugby there for Bona and Lampo, uh, and you know, he had a great career as well, got his Springbok colours and uh, you know, represented the Stormers um, uh, for quite, a, quite some time and was definitely one of their key players. Other lock we have is Bucky's Boote, um, class of 1998 from Fjernigen Gymnasium. And uh, I mean, what what more do I need to say about Bucky's Boote? I don't need to elaborate too much on him. But, um, you know, again, old Tarted helped me out of the selections, yeah, one of the followers. And, uh, you know, he basically said he saw Bucky's play at school level and it, he was always destined for bigger things. Um, you know, you can go Wikipedia him if you want all of the stats and data on him. I mean, Bucky's Wood is one of the most famous rugby players of all time and a South African legend. And obviously, according to us, a South African school's rugby legend. So finally, we get to the front row. So we start off with our first prop, who's John Smith, Pretoria Boys, class of 96. And everyone thinks of John Smith as John Smith the hooker. South African captain, South African legend, but at school level he was an absolute terror at prop. Just bullied opponents left, right and center and uh, you know, playing over 100 tests for the Springboks as well as winning the World Cup for us. Uh, definitely a legend in senior rugby and obviously like I said, according to us, a legend in school rugby. Other prop we have, none other than Oster Runt, another legend. Um, so I actually have a relative that played with Oyster Runt at school level. And uh, he just said that it was just absolutely absolute madness how he used to massacre his opposition. I mean, this guy probably played first team at 14 or 15 years of age as a prop, and that's almost unheard of. Um, Oyster was obviously another Springbok legend. He's got two World Cups under his belt. But, uh, you know, in this sort of video, what we do is we remember him for his schoolboy exploits, and I think without doubt, as a schoolboy player, he has few equals. Then our final selection at hooker, we have Peter Dixon, Maritzburg College, class of 1995. Now, you've got to think how different it could have been for Dixon if John Smith stayed at prop. Um, Dixon basically was at the Sharks at the beginning, and John Smith was there as well. You can see they're from very similar generations. Um, basically the same generation and uh, Dixon went on to go you know represent the Stormers in Western Province who was a fantastic servant to them um, but at school level this guy was definitely something special um, Maritzburg team of 1995 was top-notch uh, one of the great years of one of the many great years and uh, Dixon's definitely you know he will definitely be remembered as uh, one of the all-time great players from Maritzburg College so that's it guys, um, so next time like I said we're going to focus on the team of the 2000s, leave your comments below and let me know um, what sort of players you think we left out or you would have included or maybe even excluded and yeah have a great week further as always, cheers, bye.